No one wants to faff about looking for the data they want within a pivot table. Luckily, Excel provides some great features to sort and filter data in pivot tables, and that's what this video is all about. Hi, I'm John, and this is Up For Excel, and welcome to part three, the final part of my five-step pivot table overview. Today, we're talking about sorting, filtering, slicing, and dicing a pivot table. Now, if you missed part one or two, there's links in the description, so make sure you click on those and have a look if you're not up to speed with that. Part one was all about setting up a pivot table and just the general basics of getting one up and running. Part two looked at layouts and styles and how to make that pivot table look great. So now we're into the sort of meat of pivot tables and this is the sorting and filtering and making sure that you're only presenting the information that you want in the way that you want it. Today, I'm starting where we left off in part two with a highly presentable pivot table. I'm going to show you how you can make that easy for people to sort and filter and get it out there for people to use. And if you want a copy of the spreadsheet I'm working on, plus the finished version at the end of the video, just click on the link in the description and I'll be sent straight to you. Let's get straight into it. So imagine you're doing some analysis for the head of air freight. One thing you might want to do is on this pivot table, it's probably not going to be very interested in delivery truck figures. So you want to be able to filter them out. Now, you could um, use the shipping mode as a filter at the top like that, but then that destroys the whole look of the pivot table. So you don't really want to do that. So you need to undo that. Go back. That was control Z to undo. Back to how it looks. What you ideally want is this exact same report, but no mention of delivery truck. OK, so you can easily do that by filtering the data. So one of the first things we need, really, the easiest way to do this is to get back our row labels field header. So if we go back on analyze and we'll put the field header back on. Then we have a click down, drop down where we can just untick things that we don't want. Now, this drop down button, when you click on that, you might be misled into thinking that you're only going to be able to filter the top subtotal items. But actually what's happening is it depends on where you are in your pivot table when you click that button. So if I click on Express Air, for example, and then click that exact same button, I now get the options for that field. So we click on somewhere in the pivot table on the what we actually want to filter. Click on the drop down box. We could take out delivery truck, click OK. And there we go. We've now got air freight only broken into the two types of air. Now, the way we know this pivot table is filtered is because we have a slightly different symbol on the row labels uh, field there. And that tells us the data is filtered because we wouldn't want to get confused. We can, though, take the field header back off again. And then we don't really know that we're not, we've, we've tidied it back up, but we don't know that we're looking at filtered data necessarily, other than the fact that you see there's this filter symbol here has appeared next to ship mode in the pivot table field. What if we wanted to sort the data differently? So at the moment, what's happened is we've got consumer, we've effectively got it sorted by uh, in alphabetical order, both counts. So it's alphabetical order there and then alphabetical order there. But it might be that regular air, for example, is far more important and you want that at the top of your data all the time. Now you can, in this instance, there's only two, so you could manually, um, you could automatically sort it in reverse order. And the way you can do that, for example, is right click on there and then you can do sort Z to A. And, and you can see that what's happened is it's actually resorted all of them. Okay. You can also manually sort it by when you click on the item that you want 
hover over it until you get the crosshair and then you can move that to wherever you want. So you can move it back up to the top and similarly we can do that here. But notice how it still sorts for all the items. So you can't have some appearing in one order and some appear, you know, on others appearing in uh so you can't have regular air and express air appearing in different orders under different customer uh groupings similarly even when it's like this if you click on corporate for example say you want corporate and small business together you can go down here and that will move the whole thing around by dragging and dropping that or you could even say, well, actually, I'm only interested in corporate and small business. I'm not interested in home office and uh, consumer. So same thing. We need to put back our, we can put back our field button. So our field header. Click on there and we can get rid of home office and consumer like that. So we've now got a very targeted pivot table that is sorted in the fashion we want and um, only showing what the particular manager is interested. So hopefully she'll be happy to receive a report like that. So if I remove the filters from here for the moment then, and we'll go back to all of it. Now we can just clear all the filters. Um, we do this, clear filter from ship mode. So we'll clear all the filters. We now know that we've got everything back. And I'm actually going to put province now instead of ship mode in, because you'll see there's a lot more provinces. Um, and we'll do that. Right, so we now have sales and profit by uh, province. Now we can create a say a top five report or something very easily with this by filtering. So if we right click on that and we go to filter, you'll see that one of the options is top 10. Now, as soon as we hit top 10, we actually get asked how many we want. So we don't have to use 10 and we don't even have to have top. We could have the bottom, the bottom two, for example, we can just type in there. So, and we could say the least profitable to province. Click OK, and now we have them. You'll see that when we click back on row levels, we have this value filters button again. So I could then clear that quickly. But we also have numerous other options. You can see that we're on top 10 at the moment, but we could use many other options um, of, of filtering values. I'm just going to clear that um, and we'll go back in, right click again, filter, top 10, and we'll show the top five sales. And we could save, we can have the top five by percentage or sum, but yeah, so we go top five sales. now. In my next video, I go into a lot more detail about sorting and filtering and all of those various options that you've seen. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button and look out for that video when it comes. I've gone back to a fairly basic pivot table where I'm showing the delivery method for, uh, sorry, sales by delivery method by province. And what I'm going to show you is a, a feature where we can insert, use something called a slicer and or a timeline to make it very easy to select different parts of this data and see different summaries. And if we clicked on the pivot table, we go to the analyze uh, button and you'll see we have something called insert slicer and there's also insert timeline. I'm going to insert a slicer. And what you get is an option of, of what you want to slice. So we could say, and we can use something that's already in the pivot table, but I think what we'll do is we'll add um, customer segment. So we can tick that and hit OK. And what that does 
I'll just move that over here somewhere. That gives us a box which we can incidentally resize, so we might want to make it like that. And we can click on any of these and it will instantly show the exact same pivot table for whichever one. So if we only want to see corporate, for example, there's a summary of corporate. And this is particularly useful if you're giving the pivot table to someone else so they can use it and they don't need the any kind of technical knowledge of how the pivot table has been made up or any sort of filtering knowledge. They can just click on whatever ones they want and see them all. And if you hit the hold down the control button, you can select multiple multiple ones and when you let go the pivot table refreshes to show them all you can also tick on this button where it says multi-select and that allows you to also select several at the same time so for example if you just wanted to see that pivot table excluding corporate click on that multi-select and do that now you can make this look very good so let's do that and then if you want to clear the filter click on clear filter at the top right and you get it all back. So that's a good way of showing. And you can have as many of these as you like. So um, if we click back on the pivot table, we could analyze, we could insert another slicer, for example. And this time we could do it on um, customer segment. I'm oh, sorry, we've done customer segment. <laughs> we could do province and hit OK. And then that would allow us, if we put down there, you can see it's given us a scroll bar now, scroll through them because there's so many, but we could say put it up here um, and extend the box size to cover them all. Do something like that. And then now because it's a pivot table field, it's showing that just that one at a time, but we could have multiple and then you'll see it's just adding in rows and you could do something like that. Or you could clear it and put it back to everything. Now, if we want to get rid of that slicer, what we do is we click on it and we can just hit the delete key and that will take that option off the table. So that slicer is a very neat fe feature if you want to give the pivot table to someone else. So okay. The other thing I said I'd show you is the timeline. Now this is a fantastic if you've got a date field included in your data. So if we do insert timeline, you can see it's instantly just showing order date is the only option because it's the only date we've got in our underlying data. We'll tick that, hit OK. And what do we get? Well, we get this strange looking thing here. So I'm just going to move this, get rid of that um, out there and move this order date back over here and make it a bit bigger. Right. So what this has done is it's defaulted to show us months, but we can click on here and show years, for example. Oh, this is actually some very old data here. Uh, quarters, and now we get quarters and years, or we can go all the way to days. But let's just uh, stick with years for the moment. And then you can click on a particular year so 2010, for example, there, and instantly the pivot table will change to just show that year, um, which is an ideal way of looking at date stuff quickly by dragging it so we can use have more than one year. So if we're only interested in data from 2010 onwards, for example, that would be the way to do that. Similarly, if we went to quarters, uh, we can pick, it'll instantly do, um, show where we where we were, same thing, but we can then, for example, move it all in and just show that period, for example, of 2010 up to the third quarter. And what we can't do, unfortunately, is show multiple, so just say Q freeze. If we wanted to do that, we'd have to put it as a pivot table field and then filter it. Again, in my next video, I'm going to be going into slices and timelines in a lot more detail so you can see the options in full if you're interested in that particular item. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget you can download the spreadsheet by clicking on the link in the description below. 
and then you can see you can play around with the pivot table or you could just use it to work back through this video and start from scratch make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it out and don't forget let's get these excel skills up and these task times down see you soon